Hi, welcome to Take 5, where we daily take time to consider the devotional thoughts from Oswald Chambers' book, My Utmost for His Highest. Today is January 5th, and our focus scripture is John 13 and verse 36. Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterwards. In my reading of today's devotional, these considerations came to me. Yesterday and today's devotionals have been extremely personal for me. There's no way for this to have occurred but by divine intervention. It was while in high school that I felt the call to the ministry. I had heard the call of Christ upon my life at the age of 12, and then a few years later felt that he wanted me to serve him in the ministry. I was very mature and ignorant and had very little support in what I was doing. During these early years, I kept my drinking going and had friends that I ran with who had no trouble with how I was because the typical church has little to no recognition of the need to separate from the world in its behavior or lifestyle. Due to the constraint of time, I will summarize all of this by only saying I married and had children, went to seminary, pastored three churches, and then ran away from it all so to run my life the way I wanted to, and almost died in the process. I returned fully to a life of drugs and alcohol, increasingly getting worse in my behavior and poor decisions. It was in February of 2012 that the wreck happened that left me with a broken neck, cervical cord damage, and I was paralyzed from the neck down. I wasn't expected to live, but once they kept me breathing, they never thought I'd use my arms or legs again. But God had other plans. While in the first hospital, God gave me a phrase that I've always used since then. I put myself in a position that created a condition for him, for God, to be able to get my attention. While laying there flat on my back and unable to move, I beseeched God that if he would bring me through this, that I would go back to ministry for him. And he has held me to that ever since, and I'm very thankful. To the, degree, to the greater degree, I have again regained physical mobility, though greater than that is how he has developed and grown me spiritually over these past six years. Had events not occurred as they did, where would I be now? Tying this in to today's writings from Dr. Chambers, he closes his writings out with these two paragraphs. Between these two times, Peter denied Jesus with oaths and curses. That's found in Matthew 26, beginning in verse 69. But then he came completely to the end of himself and all of his self-sufficiency. There was no part of himself that he could rely on ever again. In his state of destitution, he was finally ready to receive all that the risen Lord had for him. He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. John 20 and verse 22. No matter what changes God has performed in you, never rely on them. Build only on a person, the Lord Jesus Christ, and only on the Spirit He gives. All our promises and resolutions end in denial because we have no power to accomplish them. When we come to the end of ourselves, not just mentally, but completely, we are able to receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. The idea is that of invasion. There is now only one who directs the course of your life, the Lord Jesus Christ. If you haven't yet read today's devotional from Dr. Chambers' book, I encourage you to do so, for it will enhance the time we spend together. Dr. Chambers' book is available free online for reading and for study. I invite you to share here your thoughts uh, from today's study or today's reading or ask any questions that you may have. Also, please share prayer requests as well. And now, may God's grace and peace be yours as we seek to live our utmost for his highest. Thanks for being here today. God bless you. Bye.